So I'm just continuing where I left off in the last video. So what I'm going to try is to cross-reference a certain parameter from the A2L uh, to that other ROM EQ601 that I just opened. So I just picked a parameter. Let's take this one here. It's called MRFTW1 radiator fan switching coolant temperature. It's stored at address 8A75 and it is a single byte. And this A2L, the only one that's surfaced so far is for ECU ID uh, ZB060, which I already opened, so I won't go through the trouble of doing that again. So the first thing I'll do is look at that parameter and figure out where it's used and how. So I'll go for a binary search of the address, 8A75. I'm lucky because there's a couple of references. Sometimes you might need to use uh, find refs to do this. So let's take the first one. So there's, sorry, sorry about that. So there's three hits or three areas at least where this uh, location is accessed. Um, I'm hoping the first one here is easy to follow. You'll see what I mean in a couple minutes. So this is the code that accesses it. So this is a false positive because it's actually reading a word, so 16 bits, and on the SH CPU what this does is to sign extend to 32 bits. Now IDA already replaced this with a label. If you bring it back to a hexadecimal number you see it's it's 30 bits wide. Yet when you come back See, it's a data word. So that happens a lot. So a lot of these hits are irrelevant. So here's another one, 8A75. Let's see where it's used. Uh, it's doing the same thing here. It's just extending to 32 bits, then using it to access some RAM, which is not what we're looking for. Let's try the third one, 8A75. Same thing again. Okay, this is really bad luck. So three in a row, none of which are the one uh, is the one that interests me. So I'll have to use find refs. So find refs. Uh, the syntax is find refs, the ROM file, and the address I'm looking for. So eight a seventy five. Let's go. No hits, <laughs> of course. I'm looking in the wrong bit, uh, in the wrong uh, ROM file. Sorry about that. Oh, that's better. So it found one hit. Uh, sometimes it, it really won't find a hit, and then you have to dig deeper and try some different stuff. I won't get into that in this video. So there's one access at 4A084. Let's see what that looks like. By the way, uh, you can see why IDA couldn't find it, because it's accessing 8A75 by loading 8A71, then accessing an offset. Here's what that looks like. So it loads 8A71, and you'll notice here it's using MOV L. And indeed, it's moving the uh, it's loading the number without doing the sign extension. So 8A75 is going in R5, then accessing plus 4. So there, there we go, that's the access we're looking for. The next thing I want to do is find out if I can identify this function. And what I mean by that is, am I going to find the equivalent function in the other ROM? So what I do for that is uh, just look at what the function looks like in general, just based on the graph overview, and go to the top then work my way up the call tree. So that function was called from here. This function was called from the call table. This is what I'm looking for. I want to land back to the call tables because these are very similar as I mentioned the other time. So this function is 4A2D8. And uh, for some reason my version of IDA um, doesn't highlight anymore. It used to be 
click once here and go here and it would highlight it. I don't know why this isn't doing it anymore. Um, here it is here. So it's uh, the last line near the number 32. Okay, so I'll put that on hold. Then you open a second window. Doesn't matter now, it's open. So this is where I left off. There's not a whole lot of stuff defined, but I do have one thing, which is the call table worker. And let me just jump back to the call tables. There we go, okay. So this is the call tables in the ROM I'm analyzing. So I'm looking for the function, which was in the line with number 32, and sometimes they line up perfectly. You'll go, okay, line 32, last function in the line, go there, and boom. And it doesn't seem like, uh, no, not really. So this one here, what I'm looking at is function entry, then BSRs, uh, control flow jumps, so I can see there's a condition check, and it's bypassing a bunch of stuff. And this is rel relatively short function, so I'm looking for something similar nearby in the call table. This one isn't it. This one isn't. So I'll just pause this and come back when I find something interesting. By the way, I'm almost improvising. I don't know if I'll be able to find this uh, this parameter. I, I hope so. So I'll throw the book at it. So I found this one here. So it's a line above and a function before. Let's see what it looks like. I see a BSR, a bunch of BSRs, then it exits. Problem with that is I don't have these uh, conditionals on the exit. So what I'll try and do next is go one level deeper. So this is in the ZB060, so the reference ROM. Uh, I think it was 14. Yeah, okay, so this is a function we're looking for. It's the first, uh, it's the second one, sorry. There's one BSR here, second one. This is the one we want. It's a fairly big function with a, a sort of a switch case structure here. Let's see, back in EQ601. And nope, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Okay. Let me put that on hold. Okay, I just um, continued go moving up and looking at all the, the functions branching out of the call table, and I think I think I got lucky. So I found this one here. So we have a couple BSRs, and then we oh, try and get this separate. There we go. It looks a lot like the other one. A couple BSRs, a few conditionals. Let's go back to 060 to this function. So that's a new ROM, reference ROM. It's pretty convincing. So let's go back into that, that function we're looking for with the, the switch case. And let's try the same thing in EQ601. And it looks an awful lot like the one we're looking for. Let's see if I switch between both. Um, this is pretty convincing. So I'll just go down here. And I'm looking for, oh, sometimes I get lost, so I have to just jump back to that access for A084. Okay, here it is, first box on the left. Let's go here, first box on the left. And it's pretty similar, so it's loading two addresses and it's gonna read into that general area of the ROM, so 6A48. And the pattern is similar, but not identical. I see it's using that address plus three as an access, and it's reading a byte in both cases. So that's encouraging. And the last thing I'll go and check is 6A48 plus three. That's 6A4B, and the value is 91. Very often, um, simple parameters like this will have the same value. So in this case, is that true? 8A75, nope. So in the reference ROM, they're using 95. So it's close, but not the same. So it wouldn't be possible to just do a search for that value, especially for a single byte. There's no way you're gonna land right on the parameter you're looking for. Uh, one other thing I like to check just to 
get a better confidence that what I found is indeed the same parameters. Usually they're stored in the same order next to similar parameters. So let's see if that's true in this case. So the parameter I'm looking for is 8a75. At 8a75, and the values I see is 78, 91, 98, a bunch of FFs, then two 1As. And here, it's not really similar. I see two 1Es, FEs, so it doesn't really work. I wouldn't count on that too much. But the function structure, this one, um, from what I've seen, this is pretty unique. I'm pretty sure this is what we're looking for. And to be extra certain, you could go back, uh, go further down and keep track of that value and see what happens to it. Other times, you see a parameter access near a table read or some other very noticeable uh, parameter. In this case, well, there's 8a7f, and it's accessing 8a80 here from this line. So let's see what's there. That's value 98. So that's in my source ROM. Let's go back to the target ROM, back to the function. And it's taking 6a54 plus 2, which is 6a56. Value is 96. What did I say the value was? 98. It's pretty close. And in the case of the reference ROM, I can go back to the, AT, the A2L and figure out what that means. So it's accessing 8a7f plus 1. Let's go back in there. Search 8a80. And there it is here, radiator fan, radiator fan switching cooling temperature too. So it makes sense that it would be working on both those parameters in the same area. So that's it. I'm pretty confident this parameter is the one I look of, I'm looking for, and I could proceed to add it to a definition. Or if I'm going to be working uh, for a longer time in this database, I'll label it. So in this case, I already forgot what the address was. 6a, 4b. So I would press N to rename it, so I'd call it I would rename it with the same name. I like to use these official names because it's so much easier to compare to other ROMs when you're not making stuff up. So MRFTW1. There we go. Data size one single byte. Perfect. That's it. In a next video, I will try maybe a harder cross-reference where, where it doesn't appear, and I'll show you some tricks that are explained in the wiki, but maybe weren't very clear.